All right, in this lesson, we are going to cover vertical total stress. And uh, this is a really important thing to be able to compute in soil mechanics. It's also pretty simple, so this will be a fairly short lesson. Um, so, so what we'll do first is start with uh, soil profile with level ground. Okay, so a horizontal surface. We'll assume the surface is a half space. That means that it extends an infinite direction horizontally in both directions, and it's just perfectly flat. The reason we have to make this assumption is that any sort of, of sloping ground or, you know, say we have some sort of an embankment here or something like that, that changes the, the pressures underneath it and it makes it more complicated to compute vertical total stress. So we're going to assume level ground to make our lives easy. And a lot of the time, this is what we have basically, right? We have a level ground condition. We can calculate um, the vertical stress at some depth. So what we'll do is have Z positive in the upward direction from the ground surface, so that's elevation. Depth is lowercase d, it's positive downward. So lowercase d is depth. And then the, the vertical uh, stress at this point is simply sigma ZZ is equal to gamma times d, where gamma is the unit weight of the material. <clears throat> if you prefer dealing with mass density instead of unit weight, you could put uh, total density times the acceleration of gravity times d. This is not like a dry density or um, something like that. It's the actual total unit weight of the soil. All right, now a lot of the time we have layering. So what if unit weight varies with depth, right? So this is a really common occurrence. We have maybe layer one, two, and three, and we want to compute the uh, the vertical total stress at a depth down here that's equal to d1 plus d2 plus d3. Well, what we need to do is integrate the vertical total, you know, the vertical forces as we go down. So um, what we'll have to do is first compute the vertical total stress at a depth of d1 and use gamma 1 to do that. Then we add to it the vertical total stress over layer 2, which would be gamma 2 times d2, and then we can compute uh, the, the vertical total stress at a depth of um, d1 plus d2 plus d3. So if we had to write this out, I mean, it's easy enough to do the calculation by hand. Like if you're doing an exam, you would do this by hand. But it's also convenient to write a code to do this automatically where you could input these parameters and then calculate the vertical total stress at any depth you, you want. So first, let's assume that d is a variable. You can specify it. It's going to be any number that you want that's uh, bigger than zero, zero or larger, right? You, you, don't, you can't compute it up here in this space, so we have a limited domain that's from the half space downward. So if d is less than or equal to d1, you simply return gamma 1 times d, right? So you're in within layer 1. You have to do this checking. Then if uh, d1 is is less than d, which is less than or equal to d1 plus d2, right? So if, if d is in this range, then you would use gamma 1 times h1 plus gamma 2 times d minus h1, right? Um, let's see. Oh, I guess I'm using h's here instead of d's. Let me clean up my notation so everything's clear. I'm going to erase these d's and replace them with h's. Um, Hopefully this will be consistent now. So H1, H2, and H3. Um, okay, so if you're in this region, you would take the pressure here and then add the increment of depth, which would be D minus H1 times gamma 2, right? So a common mistake that students will make is that they will be in layer 2, and then they'll just use gamma 2 to do the calculation as if the soil was uniform all the way up. All right, that's not the case. You always have to integrate as you go down. Uh, and then, of course, if you're in, if if uh, if d is bigger than d1 plus d2, sorry, I got to change these too. Sorry about this notation. I'll get this right here because it'd be h's. Here's an h1, and then these are h's also. There we go. All cleaned up. By the time I upload the PDF, all these mistakes will be corrected. So if, H is, if D is bigger than H1 plus H2, then you have gamma 1 H1 plus gamma 2 H2 plus gamma 3 times depth minus H1 minus H2. So just that increment. 
All right, now, of course, mathematically, what we're actually doing here is an integral. I've used the term integrate a couple of times. So sigma zz, the vertical stress, is equal to the integral of total unit weight with depth. So the integral from 0 to d, any depth that you want up there, gamma of delta times d delta, where delta is a dummy variable. Okay, our depth axis is d, but if I put a d in, in here and there, I couldn't also use a d for the limit of integration. So delta is just a dummy variable that's equal to the, the vertical depth coordinate. All right, now the problem with this equation is that we rarely have a function for gamma of depth, right? We, we wouldn't say like, you know, gamma is equal to uh, mx plus b or something like that, where m and b are constants or md times b plus b. Um, anyway, uh, what we usually have is something more like this, where we have discrete layers, each with a uniform unit weight. So usually we do this integration numerically rather than in closed form. So that's what we've done here with this set of if statements um, in here in the middle, right? That's a numerical integration. Uh, okay, now what we often do after um, doing this calculation is make a plot. We want to plot what is the vertical total stress versus depth. And then uh, we'll move on to also plotting pore water pressure and effective stress and maybe horizontal stresses too. But for now, we haven't gotten there yet, so we're just doing vertical total stress. And the other thing too is that oftentimes, you know, I'm sticking right now with sigma sub zz because that's the component of the Cauchy stress tensor that we're dealing with, the vertical stress component. But um, we, we often will use a shorthand notation instead of sigma zz with two indices. We'll just use sigma v for vertical, right? So um, we'll assume level ground conditions. Sigma v is vertical stress, and then sigma h is the horizontal stress. We'll talk about how to get that later. Um, and then we might have like tau hv, which would be shear stresses on the horizontal and vertical planes. So because we're dealing oftentimes with horizontal ground and vertical and horizontal coordinate systems, we can make these substitutions to simplify. The thing I would caution you against, though, is simplifying stress too far, right? Sometimes geotechnical engineers do this. We forget the, about the fact that we actually have a stress tensor and we should be doing tensor-based operations. So it's perfectly fine to change the notation to be sigma v. Just remember that we have a tensor and we should be analyzing it that way. Um, okay, now here's an example of how we might plot a vertical stress profile. So we, we have on the x-axis sigma v, and on the y-axis would be depth. And so in this case, I'm plotting meters and kPa. Um, the way that we usually do depth is that the numbers are positive. Okay, so here's something to keep in mind. Sometimes students will plot negative numbers in here just so that the axis is increasing, you know, you want to plot it to where vertical stress is increasing with depth as you go down. One way to do it is to make all these d values negative, right? And then it would be 0, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, and it, Excel, for example, would automatically plot it the right way. Avoid doing that, all right? Depth is positive downward. A negative depth means you're above the ground surface, so be careful about um, the sign conventions. So what you want to do instead is keep depth positive and just reverse the y-axis. Right? Instead of, you know, if you didn't reverse it, it would be like this, and the um, vertical stress would be going that way. We, we usually want it to be increasing downward where depth is positive down. So uh, learn how to master the software, reverse the axis instead of making the numbers negative. Um, okay, and then the way that I've set up this code is that there's some input parameters up here. You have H1, H2. I, I didn't put in H3, okay? So what I'm assuming, if we go back up to our profile, is that we only have three layers, gamma, you know, layer one, layer two, and then layer three just extends down forever, right? So that's the assumption I'm making here. And here we happen to be evaluating this point at a depth of H1 plus H2 plus H3, but you could evaluate any point within layer three all the way down to infinity is my assumption. All right, so we've input H1 and H2. H3, I guess, would be infinity, but we don't need it here. And then we have gamma 1, gamma 2, and gamma 3 as inputs. Maybe these could, if you're doing this in Excel, they could go up above as input parameters, and then you would have your calculations down here. So then what I've done is discretized depth into small intervals. 
And this is, there are multiple ways to do this, right? You could just have data points like right here, right there, right there, and right there. Um, what I've done instead is made a whole bunch of points along the depth so there's, you know, in 0 0.1 meter intervals, we have a new point and we can calculate vertical total stress. And so it's a pretty simple way to do it. It's easy to do with drag and drop. So here I'm calculating it down to a depth of six meters. We have zero, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so forth. And then we read our layer interface at a depth of two meters. Um, okay, and then let's look at unit weight. To get the unit weight, what we have to do is uh, figure out whether a particular value of depth is in layer one, two, or three, and assign the appropriate unit weight. So if we look at the if statement that goes in here in that cell, I'm going to assume that this is row um, one in my equations. Let me, let me make this clear. So this would be like one, two, three, and here's row number. Right, so, um, so cell A1 is this one right there. So if A1 is less than or equal to H1, then you use gamma one. Right, so this is how we can do the if statement in Excel. Um, now, this is a little trick that you may not be familiar with, but you know, usually that you have the condition, then the value if the statement is true, and then the value if the statement is false. Well, one trick you can do in Excel is put another if statement into the cell, into the, the variable that gets returned if um, the statement is false. So if A1 is bigger than H1, that means we're not in layer one, we're either in layer two or three, and we need to do another if statement to determine which layer we're in. So here I have th this, remember, um, this is gonna be the value that returns if this statement is false. So if A1 is less than or equal to H1 plus H2, then we know we're in layer two, all right? And we know that because if A1 is less than H1, we're in layer one, and we only evaluate this term here, the second if statement, if this first if statement is, if this first condition is false. So if A1 is less than or equal to H1 plus H2, we're in layer two, therefore the unit weight is gamma two. Uh, otherwise, if, we're, if the depth is greater than H1 plus H2, we're in layer three, right? So we just return gamma three. Now if you had four layers, you could also have an if statement here. You could continue going with these nested if statements as far as you want. Another alternative is to make a table and do a lookup statement or something like that. There's multiple ways to get this done. I'm just illustrating the way that I've done it. So anyway, if you plug this equation into these cells here, these are the unit weights that you would get, right? So at, at a depth of two, you're right at the interface between layer one and two. I'm using a less than or equal than sign, so you would return gamma one, and then it transitions to gamma two, and then when you get past four, it transitions to gamma three, as we Call it 18, 19, and 20 kilonewtons per meter cube for those unit weights. Okay, now we have the sigma v column. This one is a little bit more complicated to deal with. What we're having to do is an integral. So we need to do the first value, right? Anytime you do integration, you need to know the boundaries of integration. You need to know at least one integration constant. Well, this is a single integral, so you need one constant of integration. That constant that we know is that the vertical total stress is equal to zero at the ground surface. So we just plug in zero right there. Okay, and then we come down to this cell. Um, what we're gonna do in the integration is add some change in total stress to the previous value of total stress, right? So I'm gonna take this zero and it's gonna be referenced in the next row down. So that, um, is that statement uh, okay, row one is gonna be A1 times B1. So zero is the depth times the unit weight is 18. So it comes out to zero. You can also just put a zero in there. Okay, row two is gonna be this number, right? The 1.8. And what we'll do is take C1, which was that zero up here, right? C1 plus B2 times A2 minus A1. So B2 is this unit weight. A2 minus A1 is the change in depth over that interval, 0 0.1 minus 0, which is just 0 0.1. So you get 0 0.1 times 18, which is 1.8, plus 0, and you get 1.8. Okay, now we have a general equation. We can just drag and drop it all the way down. And when you get to the next cell, right, this is 3.6 because you're going to do 1.8 plus 18 times 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1. 
so that 18 times 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1 is 1.8. You add it to the original 1.8 and you get 3.6. And then you'll notice that that pattern stays the same with the same um, change in total stress until you get into layer two. And now the total unit weight has changed and you're starting to get a, a different amount. And now it's 19 times 0 0.1, right? 19 times 2.1 minus 2.0. So the slope of the line is changing, and you can get down here to 114 at the bottom. Once you've done this equation, though, just drag and drop, and all of the vertical pressures will be there. And then, of course, you can make this nice plot. And what you'll find from this plot is that the slope of vertical total stress versus depth is equal to the total unit weight. So up here, it's 18. In this layer 2, it's 19. And then in layer 3, it's 20. So uh, you can do a quick check to make sure that you've implemented these equations properly just by looking at those slopes. Um, notice that the vertical total stress has to be continuous. It cannot have any sort of big offset with depth. That's to enforce vertical force equilibrium. But the slope can change. So you get a kink at layer interfaces where the unit weight changes. All right, so that's it for this lesson, and we'll move on to effective stress next.